and welcome to Brew Report. My name is Lawrence and each week I take you on a fresh adventure in the world of beer at brewreport.co.uk. I have a soft spot for beers with ridiculously long names. Does it make it more difficult to order them when I'm at the bar, when we're eventually allowed to go back to bars? Yes. Does it make me look like a bit of a knob when I'm ordering these beers? Also yes. Do I love these ridiculous long names enough that I'm willing to look past all of that? Of course. Which is why when I spotted this delightfully named beer, there's no way I could pass the opportunity up. This is Wu Gang Chops the Tree. It is a foraged herb Hefeweizen from Tottenham Brewers Pressure Drop. And I'm intrigued to see what on earth is going on behind that name. Part of the appeal with these long names, of course, is trying to work out what on earth is the story behind them. In this instance, it took me a bit of digging. Um, Wu Gang is not um, a reference to the Wu Tang Clan. It is not even a reference to the famous Chinese actor Wu Gang, who's appeared in such films as Iron Man. No, not that Iron Man, a different Iron Man. This is, in fact, a reference to Chinese folklore in which a character named Wu Gang, for a variety of different reasons, depending on the, re uh, the version of the tale you hear, for a variety of reasons, is sentenced to chop down a tree on the moon. And each time he takes a swing at this tree, the tree regrows. Or... Now, reading about this tale sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to figure out whether being in the moon's weaker gravity would make it easier or more difficult to chop down a tree. That's not why we're here for this video. We can leave that discussion to another time after we've drank a few of them. For now, we want to see what's going on with this can, and more particularly, what's going on inside. The label is gorgeous, and that's pretty standard, to be honest, coming from Pressure Drop. They put a lot of time and care and attention into the quality of their can art. Um, in this case, it tells a story. As you rotate the can, you see different stages of the story. Wu Gang chopping the tree and his surprise and dismay as it grows back anew again. Um, I'm particularly appreciating the colour palette, the blue and white. It's almost like those willow pattern uh, uh, porcelain plates that you see. Um, and in this case, rather than holding a, a boring old plate of rice or some food, we are instead going to be treated to a delicious, tasty beer. Serving this in a tulip, I should really at some stage do a course on the best glassware for each kind of beer, but until then, I'm just rotating through my cupboard until we run out of different glasses to try. All right, so we're treated to this beautiful pale yellow beer. Um, it's got a bit of a white head, it's dissipating fairly quickly, but um, the aroma that's coming off it is really quite interesting. I'm getting a lot of bready uh, aroma there, as you would expect from a, from a Hefeweizen, but also, as sort of the bay uh, helped us predict, a little bit of a savoury note to it as well. There's a bit of pear sweetness, sort of pear droppy element to it as well. Um, in all, it's smelling really inviting and I cannot wait to take a sip of this one. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'm necessarily getting bay from the aroma on this, but we'll see whether that comes across in the palate as well. It starts very much with that baseline of malt wheat sweetness and again some element there of that, um, that, 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 that fruity sweetness, that pear drop note to it. That, as the beer warms in the mouth, you very rapidly get that, that intensifying uh, banana flavour coming through as well, that banana level of sweetness. And that in itself is supported, it it's, uh, feels all the more real because of the thickness of that mouthfeel. With all the wheat in there, it's quite a chewy, thick, unctuous beer. As we move on to the finish though, and sort of later on in the palate as the beer warms up and, and towards the finish, uh, there's a lot more of that sort of herbaceous, spicy flavours going on. So we're picking up that bay at that point, we're picking up some clove, uh, maybe a little bit of orange peel, maybe a little bit of coriander as well. It's very complex, but at the same time it's not overpowering, it's very drinkable. Um, at 3.8%, it's the sort of thing you could reasonably drink all night. This is very much a, a, an interesting and tasty session strength beer. This is a beer with complexity, but it's not overly complex. It's still quite approachable. So I would absolutely recommend this to anyone who's looking for something a little bit more interesting, something a little bit more exciting um, than your standard uh, light beers. It is still very light though. So if you are sort of making that transition, you're making that leap from lagers, you're making that leap from IPAs, there's something in here for you. That's enough from me. What I want to hear now is, what did you think? 
Have you tried this beer? Are you a big fan of Pressure Drop and their fantastic can art? Are there other wheat beers that you think are interesting and that I should try? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below or drop me an email. If you liked this review, you can find plenty more and fresh content every week at brewreport.co.uk. And until next time, happy drinking.